what can you do with a lifetime of accumulated objects? We're talking furniture, silverware, collectibles, and anything else that you can think of. It's possible that millennials, Gen Xers, and Gen Zers could be stuck with things passed down from their parents and grandparents. And this morning, we have Emily Stewart, who is the senior correspondent at Business Insider. She has recently written on this topic. Emily, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you call this the boomer stuff avalanche. What kind of problem exactly are we looking at? I mean, boomers really are kind of the material generation. Um, we know that they really liked collectibles. We know they grew up in a time of economic prosperity. They hit their prime in the 80s when the mantra is really he with the most stuff when he dies wins. Um, they have a lot of stuff. And now a lot of them are hitting retirement. They're aging and they're downsizing. And some of them are moving into assisted livings or in some cases they're passing away. And basically we're dealing with a situation where baby boomers have all of this stuff that they've accumulated over their lives. And they and their kids are looking around and thinking, lovely wedding china. Also, I absolutely do not want this or, or the giant hutch that it goes in. Thing this does, it puts a spotlight on generational differences. Do you think that baby boomers are more likely to hoard and collect things than the following generations, for example? We know that baby boomers were more of collectors than I think younger generations. They have you know, the little Hummel figurines. Again, they have the china, they have the big brown furniture. So we know that boomers did tend to collect a little bit more. I mean, that being said, one person I talked to for this story said, you know, you all millennials think that you are, you're minimalist, but we see those Amazon trucks outside of your houses every day. So it's oh, not yeah. like millennials and Gen, Z and Gen X are, are innocent in this. And vinyls are back. So can you, can, can we help it really? Can we help it? Exactly. <laughs> now let's talk about what we need to do with these things when people are receiving all of these things, can you put it off? Can you re-gift it or even kind of put this into an estate sale? What do you do? I mean, I think that the biggest piece takeaway for me was to start early. A lot of the time what happens is when families do decide it's time to, time to downsize, it's sort of in like a fire sale situation. Someone is ill, someone needs to go into assisted living. I think the best thing to do is kind of to start thinking early and really know that it's gonna take more time than you wanted to. I mean, one thing I really heard from everyone is really no storage units. If your mom doesn't want something and she puts in a storage unit for 20 years thinking that you're gonna want it and then you don't want it either, you spent thousands of dollars on that storage unit. And you know, another thing too, you, know, you can always hire a professional, maybe a downsizer, an estate sale again to really help you go through things. Um, and I think, you know, also people said it's helpful, and this is just kind of a little advice, but to start small, you know, it takes a, a lot of stuff to live a full life. And some of this stuff is really hard to get rid of, even if it's not important to you, it might have been important to your parents or your grandparents. Um, so, you know, start in a kitchen drawer or something so that by the time you do get to the wedding china, and that's a tougher decision, you feel like you have that muscle ready a little bit to make those choices a little bit easier. My favorite thing, love it, toss it, or leave it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it always works. Emily, thank you so much for hopping on and chatting with us about a very important topic.